One of the best things about the Northeast is the autumn and the spring. Shortly after the events of Frog Week, the autumn follows all of the frog activity. And look at the tremendous beauty all across the Northeast, not just Pennsylvania, focusing on the beautiful colors the leaves turn, the orange, yellow, and red that the leaves change color to. The Frog Week story might end in August, with all the videos coming out and the filming wrapping up, and even the field season getting close to the end. However, the lifestyle in doing road rescues on rainy nights, protecting the frogs and toads across western Pennsylvania, that never ends. That continues because it's more than just a Frog Week story. It's a lifestyle. And this is the beginning of a new chapter in that story, Frog Week 2024. The field season runs from mid-February till early August. However, there is still conservation work being done after this project is over for the year. Planning for the following year, doing road rescues helping the frogs get from the breeding grounds back to the hibernacula area, and also focusing on the ambassador animals featured on the Woods and Forests Media YouTube channel. All of this is taking place as the nonprofit and the media brand begin planning for the following year. Guys, it's January 26th. Look at this. You'd think we were in the middle of like spring or fall, but this is a branded tadpole that survived. The artificial pool here was frozen solid. I was able to stand on it and there are multiple tadpoles alive. That is unbelievable. How's it going guys? February 22nd, 2024. You're looking at one of the one of the sites here for Frog Week. Frog Week 2024. Came out here because it's a nice trickling rain constant. I mean this is what you'd want probably a month from now. And you'd see a ton of amphibians on the road getting to the breeding grounds wanted to see if you know today would be the beginning of the season but i mean look at how thick that is just a few days later in february i would find the first wood frog even earlier than ever before so take a look at the first wood frog in february and here we have it ladies and gentlemen the very first sign of spring for 2024 this beautiful wood frog He's um, probably just woken up from a deep sleep, five or six months. Looks like he took a poop right there. I'm sure he's probably pretty active. What a beautiful wood frog. Very healthy looking. What do you think, buddy? Good. Oh, there's tadpoles in. Oh, look at that. There's newts. There's actually newts in here already. So the time is definitely now. Even though it sounds counterintuitive, the top of the mountain over the last three years is where we found the earliest emerging wood frogs. And this year was no different. This was an incredible night just before our first events took place of the year for the Critter Talks and other things that we were going to accomplish this year through the nonprofit with PA Woods and Forests. One of the most fulfilling things for me is going out into the field to do field work and then giving presentations and taking the public on adventures to enjoy wildlife. Not only that, but this time enjoying all of the new technology that we were able to acquire for doing Frog Week this year. Take a look at the security camera. This here was able to capture a female wood frog carrying eggs, so she's gravid. Take a look at her. You can see I put an arrow there as I was scrubbing through the footage with my phone. I was able to learn that this female wood frog 
very picky, was trying to figure out which of the three pools that she was going to lay her eggs in the backyard. This was a great experience for me to see that the new technology, the weather station and the weather camera, were both actually picking up frogs. What you're looking at is the first male wood frog of the year in the breeding grounds. There are a handful of them in here, but they have eluded me. So we're gonna have to make do with this, but you can clearly see them. Wood frogs are explosive breeders. This means males and females arrive generally around the same time to the breeding ground. However, the males outnumber the females pretty significantly. So it's not uncommon to see multiple males mounting a female. The way the two males are at her vent, they have the opportunity to fertilize her eggs together. This would mean both of them are the father. Even though this looks harmful and it does kill a lot of female wood frogs every year, this is something that's very common to come across at the breeding ground. These wood frogs are sort of pre-gaming because the majority of the wood frogs are active during the beginning of the ephemeral rains. These rains initiate the breeding season and bring out the majority of the wood frogs from around the forest. You could hear the large choruses gathering at the vernal pools. This is what draws the majority of the females to choose their breeding site if they're lucky enough. This is also why a lot of volunteers don't want to come out to film wood frogs. It's usually in the upper 30s or low 40s and it's raining non-stop. It amazes me every year seeing how many of these wood frogs gather at the different breeding sites. There's so many wood frogs, yet so little time. The other thing that really cracks me up is seeing the male on top of the female while he's still calling. He's still trying to woo her. And while this is happening, the dominant predator in these parts, the American bullfrog, watches. I don't think they can eat a wood frog this early in the season with it being so cold. But once it gets warm enough, you could believe that the bullfrog is going to go to town. So the wood frogs not only have to try to beat the bullfrogs and other predator frogs, but they have to breed with the very short window that their species has every year. It's a race against the clock. The spotted salamander has graced us every frog week, and it's truly one of the most exciting scenes. However, this year they came out a little bit earlier than usual. It was significantly warmer early in March, so it didn't surprise me. However, look at this magnificent scene of a congress of salamanders, the males dropping the spermatophores for the females to pick up, and this would initiate the breeding for the spotted salamanders. Take a look at these beautiful, large salamanders just dumping spermatophores into the water. It almost looks like the breeding ground is breaking out with zits. And then take a look up at the yard. This was also a great sight to be seen. Why, hello there, buddy. One of the projects that I've undertaken is creating small vernal pools or artificial pools in the backyard and doing this for others around the community in the Frog Week area. Oh. This was a great scene because it showed that the wood frogs not only were still coming to my house, but also reproducing. And check out these day shots at the top of the mountain, looking at the newts and the wood frogs from an even greater perspective. See the wood frogs coming out later. 
makes them a lot quicker. So much easier to get away from me and from cars. Newts are mating. You can see the many, many wood frogs out here. This is their element in the rain, guys. There's even wood frogs that are coming. This next scene is one of my all-time favorites of Frog Week history. I get the chance to share with you what it's like walking up on a wood frog breeding ground, and this is all raw and in the moment. Just imagine you're experiencing this as I am from first person. Everything that you see reflecting my light, those eye shines are all wood frogs. Hundreds, if not nearly thousands of wood frogs.
What are you doing? No, no, no. Come here. Come here. Come here. Won't even let me get your picture, huh? Off he goes. We have ourselves a graveyard of spotted salamanders on the road here tonight. You'd see, I'm not gonna show how graphic it is. There's the remains of a spotted salamander. Beautiful white frog here. Hi, buddy. You almost looks like Ananias, but I know you're not. We're at a new location now. Beautiful little wood frog. No spots either. I'm going to take him up here a little bit. Peekaboo. One of the coolest scenes that I could show you for episode two is the spermatophores and the spotted salamanders on the right and the wood frog and the wood frog egg clutches on the left. It's really cool to see how they segregated out the spermatophores so far away from the egg clutches, but also to see two different species breeding in the same habitat. It's just truly unique and I wanted to showcase this along with the results from all of the other pools of water where the wood frogs had been laying eggs. You can see all those eggs in there. I think it's a better pickup for the phone, ironically, but you can see all those eggs. The aftermath, you know, that's actually more than I thought it was. So we're looking at, I don't know, not as many as last year, but I mean, I'm saying roughly about 200, maybe 200 to 300 egg clutches individually, which is one of the most impressive feats I've seen ever in this area for frogs or toads. That's a lot of eggs. This pool is a lot more shallow than the other. So there are fewer in here, but it'll be interesting to see if these survive. Well guys, there are a lot of egg clutches here. I'm not, I'm not sure I remember the total number right here, but I think overall there's about 50 egg clutches combined with the three different pools. There are three in one, there are like 20 in the other, and then the rest are here. There are three over here as well. You can see them there. Uh, and there are still males out here with me tonight. Only a handful in this population. At the other population, there were still hundreds that were out, maybe around 100. I wouldn't say hundreds, but 100, 150 up there at the mountain. Here though, in this spot of the Western Woods, further away, uh, they compete, but they have a more modest population already. And here we have their egg clutches. It looks like that's probably what this is gonna top out at is around 50. Um, no female spotted salamanders have yet emerged to pick up the spermatophores. You can kind of see the little dots. They almost look like pimples, like the vernal pools breaking out with zits. Um, the females haven't come yet. So they'll scoop those up and we'll see what happens when the females get here. But yeah, as for the wood frogs, this might be it. I don't really expect many more. There might be a couple like three or four, but I don't expect them to have more than that. So just a really unique adventure here as you joined us to close out the wood frog breeding season. As Easter Sunday rolled around, I was very surprised to see that not all of the wood frogs were done laying eggs. They almost got a second round, if you will, at least for one location. And that location we haven't really visited too much yet for this episode that's down by the well. Check out this chorus of spring peepers overwhelming our ears.
Not every scene needs narration to be great, and I wanted this year to be special for you to take in the sights and sounds of Frog Week from out in the field, and that doesn't always need to be narrated, to take something in and experience it. Now what we are looking at here are these newts ripping apart the embryos of the wood frog egg clutches. They almost look like little alligators as they do this. Have you ever seen newts eat frog eggs? This is the first frog walk of the year, I want to talk about uh, the Somerset County Conservancy and also a little bit about PA Woods and Forests who's putting this on and uh, a little bit about our friends in there. So this is a uh, joint venture here. This is an event at the Somerset County Conservancy's Kimberly Run. How many of you guys have been here before? Up with water. From my understanding you can see a lot of moss and this plant here is called dewberry. It could be just that they're not here tonight with us. So that way I can see where things are at and point it out to you. So if we all go up to the crowd, then it's going to cause confusion and the frogs will just jump everywhere. That's happened both ways. Death pad, saw the egg mass right here. There's spotted salamander right there, guys. Boy, what actually produces the egg. Now, it's surprising that they're still out. Yes, yeah, so we've got another spotted salamander and there's a new right next to it. Being the disease that is uh, in the usually in the breeding grounds that they'll pick up, ranavirus is another one that a lot of pond frogs will carry, and they'll infect everybody else. Uh, pollution is a really big problem. So I've got these snails. They're native to Pennsylvania. They're actually from Somerset County, and I've got this pitcher plant. The pitcher plant is also native to Somerset. The wood frog breeding season is always one of my favorite times of the year. They're one of my favorite frogs, hands down, and I'm so thankful for the opportunity to do conservation, building habitats, road rescuing them, and doing anything else that I possibly can to help them. I hope that you'll continue to watch Frog Week this year and you'll enjoy seeing the shots from the field and all of the conservation. Don't forget to like and subscribe and share with your friends for more Frog Week content. <laughs>